Megalickens or oh, it's Kickins. <laughs> I don't know what that was. We don't know what that spin was. Anyway, we're back in Gone Home, episode three. Now I said we were going to head back this way, but I got messages from people saying that they saw a question mark in this drawer. So here we go. Ooh, ooh, it's the false bottom. What have we got here? To Terence Greenbrier. Hello, Terence. I write on what I hope and imagine must be a joyous occasion. News reaches me that you are newly married to a wonderful young woman. I have had more than a little time during my long days and nights at the house on Arbor Hill to consider my past and my family, and my thoughts have often lingered on your development and welfare in the ten years since we last met. Your marriage gives me much reassurance in this regard. I wish you and your new bride many happy years together. You are always welcome on Arbor Hill. Though I will understand, of course, if you feel you cannot accept this invitation. So that is from that uncle. That is from the uncle when my dad got married to my mum, I'm assuming. That's cool. Wait, now let's check out what this hallway has to offer. We have got some stuff on this table. We got coupons. Yay, we can get 25 cents off some stuff. Great. Um, a pamphlet. United States Department of Agriculture. Okay. Not sure who that's for. Still thundering outside, still a bit of a stormy night, but we're inside the house so I'm sure nothing bad will happen, especially if we keep all these lights on. Here we go, that's better. So what have we got in this room? We've got a textbook. World history, great. Um, folder, okay. An assignment, this might be one of Sam's. Okay, the reproductive system worksheet by Samantha Greenbrier. There are two stories about the reproductive system, the menstrual cycle and the man cycle, and they have to put them in order and make a little paragraph about how the menstrual cycle or the man cycle works. So, here we go. The menstrual cycle, a novella. The early morning of September 1st, 1939. Essa Glatt stares out the window of the train as it travels from Vienna back to her home village of Weilen in Poland. As the train rumbles along, and the sun rises over the countryside. She can only think of her dear Borislav, the boy she is engaged to wed. Meanwhile, deep within her guts, an ovum starts to develop. Essa's train approaches its station. Her heart races. The lining of the uterus is getting thick and soft. Okay, she's kind of done her own interpretation here of the reproductive system. I think this is supposed to be a piece of non-fiction, just describing how the body worked, and she's turned into a little bit of a story. So that's... That's good. She, she seems to like writing stories. But um, we won't read that whole thing because it might get a bit in depth. All we have at the end is the teacher wrote see me. So she might be getting in trouble for that. Okay. What else have we got? We've got a light. We'll turn that on. A record? I have no idea who that is. It's got a duck on it though. It's a good friend of our Christmas duck from out the front. What else have we got? We've got, we've got a bar here. Oh man. Can we do some shots maybe? There's a bottle of whiskey. Here we go. Hmm. And in. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Here we go. Right. Whiskey. In the glass. Good. No. In the glass. No. In the glass. Good. So. Good. That's, oh, that's so yummy. Good. That was great. Let's have a soda instead. Here we go. Let's have a... Dr. Jitters. What's the bad thing that could happen? <laughs> Great, what's in here? Dad's second book. The Accidental Pariah are getting about JFK. I think we saw that back in the book room. And a letter. I write to inform you that unfortunately Mercury Books will be unable to publish your follow-up to The Accidental Pariah. Despite the low sales of The Accidental Saviour, we went ahead with publication of the second books in hope of it catching on. However, sales of the second book have been lower than those of the first, and so our stewardship of the series must end here. Okay, so my dad might not be having a lot of luck getting the publisher, and he's, he's not doing so good on that freelance reviews either, so... That would explain all the whiskey that we've been encountering, maybe. What else have we got here in this room? We've got another closet, I think. Here we go. Oh, this is a bit bigger. Spacious. Lots of records, lots of music. Lots of my dad's books, obviously they weren't selling very well, so we've ended up with like a load of them. Um, and here we go, a letter. Samantha, please give this to your mother. 
No, I can't read that with that text overlay back on. Janice, thank you for having Danny over to your new home. He has missed having his friend Samantha in the neighbourhood very much. Danny asked if he could lend Samantha his Nintendo Street Fighting tape, and I gave my permission. He needs to spend less time with those games anyway. No hurry returning it. Let Samantha know she is welcome back to our house to visit any time. Okay, so that's Danny's mother, who Samantha says was the weirdo and didn't really want to hang out with him. But he did have a Nintendo, and now he has a street fighting tape, so I'm assuming she did take him up on that offer. Oh, here we go, default friends. When you live in one place your whole life, your next door neighbor is kind of like your default friend. And Daniel only got weirder over the years. So moving away has been a good excuse to, like, not see him anymore. But he did always have the good Nintendo games. Maybe I'll give him a call. Okay, so not really a fan of the Dan. Uh, Danny is a bit of a weirdo, she didn't really enjoy hanging out with him. She only hang out with him because he was pretty much the only kid around to hang out with. I know that feeling. But he does have a Nintendo and Street Fighter, so there's still a bit of happiness there. What have we got here? Katie, please tell mum and dad sorry about the stuff that's missing. From Sam. Okay. That's interesting. Not sure what that's referring to. Got some highlighters in there. Got some papers. Ah, um, oh, here we go. Another note. Hi, Lonnie. So if you want... Hold on, we'll put that. There we go. Hi, Lonnie. So if you wanted to come over to my house still this afternoon, that would be cool. I can drive. It's kind of far, but I can drive you home too, so hopefully that's fine. Write back and leave this in my locker if you still want to, and we can meet in the parking lot after 6. Samantha. Yeah, I am totally in. See you there. Then I'm going to kick your butt. Get ready. L. There's a little drawing of a Hadouken going towards Sam there. So that's, that's Lonnie. Okay, that might be Samantha's friend with the gold star. So you know what they say about the best light plans of mice and men? Yeah, turns out it applies to Street Fighter too. At least I worked up the courage to walk into the 7-Eleven and ask for a turn, but all that practice at home did not exactly translate in the wild. So after I was finished getting my butt kicked, I followed them outside while they smoked. And that was when she asked me if I was that psycho house girl. Oh no. But then she said she's always really wanted to see the psycho house. Oh yay. <laughs> Her name is Lonnie. She's coming over tomorrow. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. So she's actually got a proper friend there. It's not the weirdo Danny. It's someone that actually didn't make fun of her for the Psycho House thing. Just actually kind of liked it. So that's cool. So we've got a paper in the bin here. Katie, please, whatever you found, don't tell mum and dad the attic and scribbled out and crumpled up. Okay. So there's something... Okay, there's something that's that's going on here that she doesn't want mum and dad to know. Hmm, I wonder what that is. That's locked. Um, so what option do we ha I guess we have to go upstairs now. That's fine, I can handle that. We know that it's just bad wiring and we know that it's just a storm. There's no actual- oh! <laughs> There's no actual spooky things. There's no actual ghosts. It's- it's fine. It's definitely fine. Right, the front door's locked so that nothing creepy can come in. We are- go we're gonna go upstairs. Here we go, I can do this. I can do this. There's a light. We turn that on straight away. There we go. Okay. Got another pack of cards and a newspaper clipping. Control burn schedule for Boone County. Plumes of smoke will rise above the northeastern region of Boone County as part of a forestry service run control burn of overgrown sections. Okay. In addition to removing dead and overgrown vegetation that can lead to wildfires and dry months, it will serve as a valuable training tool for the firefighting personnel, said senior conservationist Janice Greenbrier. Okay, so that's what our mum does. Our mum is some kind of forest ranger, conservation conservationist, forest thing person. Good! Right, can we turn... Good, there's a light switch. What have we got in here? Anything of... A comb! There we go. We can just style style ourselves, give a little comb there. That's fantastic. Personal calendar. Weekly planner. I can't read that. <laughs> Couples bowling. Cooking class. Ballroom dancing. Couples bowling. Cook the big meal for Terry and Sam. So I'm thinking this is probably my mum's planner or something. 
couples bowling, that sounds interesting. And notice of temporary personnel transfer. To aid in the upcoming pres prescribed burn operation, a range of expertise on the procedures being transferred to the station at Flintlock National Forest. The overseeing officer, Janice Greenbrier, is charged with the supervision of transferred personnel. Okay, so yeah, she's, she's actually... Sounds like she's a pretty important person there, looking after the personnel and training them and stuff. So that's cool. Seems to be doing better than my dad, at least. Anything in here? Ooh! A cassette case. The Bratmobile. Potty mouth. Here we go. For Sam. Ah, okay. Wonder who that's from. It's weird hanging out with girls. Yes. Daniel was around ever since I was little, and other girls? I don't know. But being around Lonnie is like instantly just right. I gave her the grand Psycho House tour and took my revenge on Super Nintendo. And it was like, I don't know, I finally found someone I feel normal around. I drove her home and she gave me this tape and said, you have got to listen to this. I haven't stopped playing it since. I had a big smile on my face while I was listening to that. She sounded so happy. She sounded like she's finally got a friend. I never could like fit in with girls either. I could never fit in with boys either. I was pretty much just alone. So I can kind of dig that. But I can also kind of dig that feeling of finally finding someone you feel normal around. And I think I found someone like that. And now I'm all smiley just as she was and I'm happy. Well there's a radiation warning on that door and I'm not ready for that. So I think that's a good place to end the video. On a happy note about finally finding someone that makes you feel good and happy and gosh I'm just I'm all smiley and, and I can't I can't think properly now because I'm in love so we catch you next time in the radiated room of radiation you are awesome thanks ever so much for watching me today you really are awesome thank you goodbye gosh I am just ridiculously happy